Thank you. Therefore, it is now time for members' statements. The member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. I wanted to share with members of the House a letter I received from a constituent of mine about the unaffordability of hydro. They wrote, quote, for many like myself and my husband, we are finding it impossible to pay our utilities. I've been on disability through work for the past two years. The employer my husband worked for previously for 20 years shut down and went south of the border. The only work he was able to get pays him barely more than minimum wage. We live in Shelburne. We're so proud that we finally have saved enough to purchase our first house 14 years ago. Although we do not bring in a lot per year, we are still a few thousand dollars over the low income threshold for any kind of government assistance with our utilities. Each month, we have to decide who to pay. Pretty soon, we will be more than likely end up with one or more utilities being disconnected. Life seems bleak right now. Do we pay our utilities and starve without a roof over our heads? If someone isn't isn't done, sorry, if something isn't done soon, then our fine province will end up like Detroit, derelict and abandoned. Speaker, just the other day, the Ontario Association of Food Banks stated that many of their users are having difficulty as well affording hydro. This government has forced people to make the difficult choice of whether to eat or pay their skyrocketing hydro bill. It's time for the government to provide real relief to thousands of individuals and families like my constituent. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise today on behalf of my constituents of Windsor West, in particular all those working in the skilled trades. The so-called Building Ontario Up for Everyone Act disrespects those working to actually build Ontario and jeopardizes their health and safety. Bill 70 undermines routine workplace inspections, the process that ensures workers are properly trained and working in a safe environment. It devalues the skilled trades. At a time when we are encouraging our young women and men to become certified tradespeople, when we are touting the quality of life and satisfaction that the trades will bring our next generation of workers, this Liberal government is hollowing out health and safety legislation and paving the way for privatization. It's not surprising, given that this Liberal government views routine safety checks as a burden. Their word, not mine. In an email, the ministry staff stated this program would reduce the burden of unnecessary processes such as routine inspections. While this government views routine inspections as a burden, those actually working in the trades view them as essential, a proactive process that prevents injuries, prevents occupational illnesses, and saves lives. I couldn't agree more. That's why New Democrats called for Schedules 16 and 17 to be removed from this bill. That's why New Democrats stood in solidarity with thousands of skilled trades workers outside Queen's Park this morning and why I'm bringing their concerns before the Legislature this afternoon. Speaker, New Democrats don't just stand with workers when the cameras are flashing, like the Conservatives that don't support the College of Trades. We fight for the right to a safe and secure workplace every day inside this chamber Thank and you. will continue to do so. Thank you. Further member statements, member from Ancaster, Dundas, Flamborough, and West Hill. Thanks, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to share a statement that was shared by Cameron Batty, a representative of the Hamilton Mountain Mosque at the Hamilton Remembrance. Uh, the Garrison Parade. He reads, and I quote, 885 Muslims, including 400,000 Indian Muslims, were recruited by Allied forces to fight in World War I. Today, there are Muslims serving in the Canadian Armed Forces, including many friends of mine from this city. Many of the Muslims who came to this country have come from nations where there is no freedom, transparency, or democracy. Our veterans have served our nation to protect these values and remind us of what it means to be Canadian. It's because of our veterans that people are able to flee from oppressive regimes and find refuge and safety here in Canada. Veterans remind us of the meaning of responsibility, honour, sacrifice, integrity, and selflessness. Our veterans define what it means when we say we're in this together. There is no greater unifying entity in Canada than commemorating those who serve. <clears throat> Our veterans are those who came together to protect one nation, one flag, the flag of Canada. As a community, we need to now commit to serve you as you have served us. This begins with me. I commit to you all to be a servant in any way that I can to assist in any way possible. My commitment to you is to continue to promote the values which you fought for, the protection of civil liberties, freedoms, human rights, and inclusivity for all. Thank you. Thank you. 
Member statements. The member from Wellington Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, working together for almost a decade, we in Wellington Halton Hills have been actively pushing for improved GO train service for the residents of our communities, and we've made some significant progress. The Acton GO station was reopened in January of 2013, giving our area residents another access point for commuter rail service to the Greater Toronto Area. Additional new trains along what we now call the Kitchener Corridor give our Georgetown area residents greater flexibility for their daily commute. However, we have not forgotten the promise that was made by the Liberal government in the 2014 election campaign to establish all-day, two-way GO train service between Kitchener and Union Station in downtown Toronto. It was only after the 2014 election that was over that the government admitted that they were planning to take 10 years to keep the commitment to two-way all-day rail service through Wellington Halton Hills from Kitchener to downtown Toronto. This demonstration of political cynicism was disappointing, to say the least, but it only served to strengthen our resolve. As soon as it was possible to do so after the 2014 election on July 2, I tabled a private member's resolution calling on the government to immediately move forward to fulfil their commitment to provide full-day two-way GO train service on the Kitchener line between Waterloo Region and the GTA with stops in Wellington Halton Hills. It was one of the first resolutions on the Ontario Legislature's order paper. When the new session began in September, I again tabled my private member's re resolution supporting better GO train service. It continues to stand out as one of the very first resolutions on the order paper. We appreciate the work Metrolink staff are doing, and recently I asked them for an updated briefing on their progress to improve GO train service. That meeting took place at my Queen's Park office last week. We call upon the Minister of Transportation to undertake all reasonable efforts to expedite the prerequisites for Thank improved you. GO train service along the Kitchener line, and in doing so, keep the government's promise Thank you. to our community. Further member statements? The member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This morning I had the honour of joining more than 4,000 men and women who make fantastic contributions to the Ontario economy on the front lawn of Queen's Park. Those 4,000-plus men and women who are outside today are skilled trades workers. They represent the thousands upon thousands of men and women who work every day to make Ontario a better place to live, work and play. Mr. Speaker, these men and women are representing International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers and Electrical Contractor Association of Ontario. They represent the Ontario Pipe Trades Council, Unifor Trades. They represent the Sheet Metal Workers of Ontario, United, United Association, Canadian Pipe Trades, and the Canadian Automatic Sprinkler Association. All of these organizations and all these workers are here today for one reason. They're here today to tell the Liberal government that the changes they are trying to force through with Schedule 16 and 17 of Bill 70 are wrong. Those schedules will reduce safety of workers. It will open up the trades to people who don't have necessary training and will do this all without having consulted those workers who are affected. Mr. Speaker, we need policies that encourage young people to pursue trades. We need policies that encourage more women to pursue trades. These are jobs that pay well, are mostly unionized, and because of the taxes they bring and fund our health care, our education, and might even allow us to stop the sale of Hydro One. It's time for the Liberals to do the right thing and remove Schedule 16 and 17 from Bill 70, work with our skilled trades people instead Thank of you. against them, and actually take action to encourage Thank more you. people to become a trade. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this month, over the course of two weeks, I held two town hall meetings in my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore on the topic of reform of the Ontario Municipal Board. Mr. Speaker, I had over 120 residents attend, and these were people that I've worked shoulder to shoulder with over the course of the last 25 years, dealing with the issues in our neighbourhoods and communities about how to ensure good planning. Mr. Speaker, the ideas that were brought forward by my constituents uh, were very thoughtful and well thought out. They were talking about ways to give, make sure that municipalities' decision-making is respected through the appeal process. They had suggestions on how we could ensure that residents and communities could be better engaged uh, in the appeal process at the Ontario Municipal Board. Mr. Speaker, we also highlighted the number of steps that have already been taken uh, to circumscribe some of the authority of the Ontario Municipal Board, and residents thought that was a good avenue to continue pursuing, to make sure the local communities and local councils have more final decision-making say. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in Ontario, we have a very robust uh, land use planning system. 
but it does take away some of the authority of municipalities by allowing too many venues for various types of appeals to be undertaken to undermine that local decision making. My residents brought forward good ideas, and I'm looking forward Thank to you. seeing them implemented, Mr. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Haldeman Norfolk. Canada is in uh, mourning following the death of fighter jet pilot Thomas McQueen, 29, in a Royal Canadian Air Force training accident. And McQueen's uh, CF-18 Hornet crashed on the Cold Lake weapons range, which straddles the Alberta-Saskatchewan border. Uh, we do appreciate the Ontario Legislature taking a moment of silence for Captain McQueen from my riding in Haldeman, Norfolk. Thomas was the eldest of four from a farm just outside Fisherville in Haldeman County. McQueen was homeschooled, and while the family was private, they were involved in their close-knit community. Many of the homes on Concession Road 4, where the McQueen family farm is located, have hung their flags at half-mast. McQueen had the honor of being an escort pilot for Santa Claus during NORAD's annual holiday Santa Cam Tranker. He guided Santa, Fisherville resident Lynn Rayner, told the Toronto Sun, everyone in Fisherville was ecstatic. That's the kind of guy he was. He would do that. McQueen was a member of 409 Tactical Fighter Squadron at CFB Four Wing Cold Lake, a 10-year RCF veteran with uh, time served in Canadian military, both in the Middle East and uh, in Eastern Europe. Uh, I have a, a very nice quote from General Jonathan Vance, Chief of Defence Staff, which time will not permit. Uh, Captain Thomas McQueen, 1987-2016, will be forever missed, and we are so proud of him. Thank you. Further members' statements? The member from Glengarry Prescott. -Wilson. Thank you very much, Speaker. There are so many great people and great things happening in my riding at Glengarry Prescott Russell. Speaker, on Thursday evening, I had the honour of presenting the Premier's Awards for Agri-Food Innovation Excellence in Morrisburg. And on Friday afternoon, together with board members, staff and stakeholders of Valoris, we celebrated the official opening of the new administrative building in Ambre in Russell Township. On Friday evening, I had the privilege of attending the fifth anniversary of the Russell Kin Club. And Speaker, what a night it was. Not only were all of the club's accomplishments and community contributions highlighted and celebrated, but, Speaker, there was a surprise. A local dedicated community leader and volunteer, Cindy Anthony, was awarded with Kin Canada's highest honour, a life membership. Cindy is well known in the community for taking the lead and playing a major role in dozens of projects and events over the last five years. Congratulations and well deserved. And Speaker, on Saturday night in Rockland, we celebrated a successful and productive year with outgoing warden Guy Desjardins of the United Counties of Prescott Russell. And I take this opportunity to thank and acknowledge the great work and strong leadership he provided across the region. Congratulations, Warden Mayor Desjardins. At the event, the second annual JP St. Pierre Award was awarded to Doug Anthony. This award, presented by Jocelyn St. Pierre, uh, JP's wife, recognizes exceptional contributions and dedication to communities. Congratulations to Doug for his involvement and leadership in the Russell Kin Club, Toastmasters and Poutmasters, among many other events, but particularly for his amazing work on the future Russell Sports Dome. What a weekend it was. Congratulations, Cindy and Doug Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. Other member statements, the member from Nipissing. Thank you and good afternoon, Speaker. Uh, communities in my riding are expressing concerns about the government's flawed cap and trade plan, which they say will have a particularly negative effect in northern communities. The communities of Powassan, Chisholm, and Callender have all recently passed municipal resolutions regarding their concerns. The government's cap and trade plan includes a 4.3 cent per liter increase in gasoline. Uh, and average monthly costs of $5 or more for natural gas. The leaders of these communities note that Northern Ontario already faces challenges with higher and rising gasoline costs, has colder winters impacting home heating costs. Furthermore, in the north, residents often face farther driving distances between major centres for services such as health care and education. As a result, the municipalities of Powassan, Chisholm, and Calendar resolve 
that, quote, the government exempt Northern Ontario from natural gas hikes under the cap and trade plan and eliminate the proposed increase of 4.3 cents per litre in gasoline costs. Speaker, it's time for the government to start listening and stop making life more unaffordable for Ontario families. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's therefore time for reports by committees.